My uh, debut in television was on a soap opera called The Brighter Day. The Brighter a Day <laughs> soap opera. <laughs> and uh, I was, uh, as I said before, I was a uh, an actor uh, uh, desperate for work because my wife had uh, uh, had a baby and it was uh, in a depression and we were in deep, deep trouble. And uh, I had, I was always trying to look for ways to get ahead somehow. And I had got the idea from a friend of mine who lived down in the village to go to the post office and get petty postcards. In those days, you could get postcards that were marked already for a penny. So I got 100 petty postcards. And I got bought a little mimeographic machine. It was about this big. And I made a... Uh, a, a, a send out thing with the petty postcards and every week I would, I would send out, uh, make a hundred of them in my apartment and send them out to uh, casting directors. Most of the casting directors then were in uh, uh, like Young and Rubicam. They were in, uh, what do you call it, those, those places, you know, uh, advertising agencies. agencies for the soap opera. And uh, I got a call to audition for a soap opera that Young and Ruby Cam was putting on. Well, I want to tell you, man, I <laughs> said, lady, uh, that was like, a lightning stroke to me because I had never been given that kind of an opportunity. And so I, uh, I did, uh, I did and then I had a call back. And I got a call back and I auditioned with this beautiful, beautiful, voluptuous looking girl, woman, woman. Uh, for a role on The Brighter Day, that she was going to be my girlfriend. And we were in a studio in Vanderbilt Hall or something like that up there, and I was scared to death. People, there were people behind the big glass, glass thing in the dark, you couldn't see them. And 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 uh, we were down on the floor uh, of a studio, you know, television, and we were acting. And this girl was beautiful, oh boy. And uh, uh, we did a pretty good scene. It was a love scene. And now I had worked like hell to try to get somewhere hopelessly for weeks and months. And here I am in this big studio, this beautiful girl, and these people. And I did this scene. And they wait. They didn't dismiss us. They said, please wait right there, Hal. I waited. And A voice said, Hal, come on up to the booth. Well, I'd never had an experience like that, and I thought, come up to the booth, maybe that's good news. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm going to, maybe, maybe, maybe. So I went up to the booth, there was all these people in the booth, and they were smiling at me. And I thought, <laughs> What's happening? Do I have this job? And this lovely woman, about 55 years old, 
Jewish lady <laughs> comes up to me and smiles. Doris Frankel was her name, and she had written the script. <laughs> and I said, I was introduced to her. And I said, finally, I said, Doris, do I have this job? <laughs> and she said, yes, Al. <laughs> I want to tell you, it was one of the greatest moments I ever had. Uh, I had a job in a soap opera. I'm being paid $100 a week for doing two or three shows a week. <laughs> I could buy food. I had a job. And Doris Franco was a sweet lady, a very dear lady. She looked at me and I, it was because of her I got the job, I know. She just, uh, she just, uh, she got my message, you know. I got hers too. And uh, I walked out, of the, I walked out of the street over to Park Avenue, and I had, I had to stop and look at the stores because I was crying. I stopped and I looked at the store windows because I was crying. It was before, actually before Christmas, and I had no work, and I needed so badly. I needed a job, and I had a job, and I had a family with a baby, and I had a job. I never forgotten the uh, gratitude that I felt then. I never forgot it. And so I was on that soap opera for five years. I played Grayling Dennis, <laughs> the son of the family, trouble, troublemaking young man. Grayling Dennis on the brighter day. And uh, I was a lucky kid. 